What's up guys, it's Drek, and I thought that we'd take a little bit of time out of our busy holiday schedule to talk about Springer's in the Rival line. Now, uh, conveniently enough, we have a Phantom Core Apollo and a Phantom Core Helios out here, which means that it's easy for us to, to talk about these kind of in a versus scenario, but also in a generic comparison. There's something hiding over here that we'll get to later, but what I wanna talk about right now is value in terms of what you get for your money in terms of performance, especially with Rival, which is a performance-focused line like which one of these is going to reign supreme, which one will last on the shelves longer, like, and why. So the uh, Apollo is the original rival uh, Springer. It came with a seven round, although the Phantom Core one comes with a... 12 round, which is interesting enough. We thought that the 12 rounds were completely gone, but then lo and behold, the Helios drops and it has a seven round. So they're back, you can have a low profile or an extended magazine. And these two in particular are very significant because these are the only two rival blasters that load from the handle like this, quote unquote, Uzi style. Now. I think that that is a really cool feature and a lot of people have utilized that in modifications, but realistically, it's just a very ergonomic way to kind of reload a blaster like this in this style like that is very comfortable and then you can tap this button this way. Now, uh, there were a lot of improvements when getting to the Helios from the Apollo, so things that we don't have to necessarily cover is that they are both uh, springers and they both have functionally identical performance. That is to say, they hit the same FPS, they do the same in terms of their range performance as evidenced by that versus that and the major difference there being that I hit the fence with the Helios. Now, they've both been loaded up with a combination of genuine and uh, headshot ammo. I really like headshot ammo. Tends to be cheaper than the MSRP for Hasbro ammo and depending upon what's on sale at the moment, it can be better or worse. Now, I do wanna do a quick size comparison since they're very, very similar blasters in terms of their performance. The Apollo is just a hair shorter than the Helios, and it seems to be just a hair thinner. Not really though, like very, very close. The Helios has far more uh, tactical rail space on top and an overall more ergonomic profile in a lot of different ways. If you look at the Apollo, it looks almost like a prototype. There is nowhere to put your hand up here. You have to kind of brace it like that. The muzzle is very plain. The tack rail is very small. You've got this monster priming bar on top that impedes your vision. There's nowhere to put your cheek here because this is not a cheek rest and this back end is not a stock point. Like this actually is angled such that it slides on flesh, particularly uh, clothed flesh. So it just slides off like that. Ergonomically, this blaster is a nightmare. It's designed to be a pistol. You can't really shoulder it. There's no other way to play with it. It's not a pseudo primary at all. The safety is the button version, which is uh, an older style mechanism. And honestly, I don't like the safeties on these at all, but if I did have to have a safety, I would much rather have the traditional click up, click down firearm style safety. That is much nicer. Both of them have this feature here and then Primary difference, I guess, in terms of the maintenance of the blaster is that while both have a priming indicator, the Helios is on the side and the Apollo is in the back, which honestly isn't a detractor from either because the way that you want to have the Apollo is out in front, so you can check it there, and the way that you want to have the Helios most of the time is shouldered, so you check it by peeking into that window. Now, I do prefer that this has a jam door. I will not give it a lot of points for that because the jam door is so small, guys that you could barely get in there to do much of anything. However, it does show you how this is going to perform. Now, let's uh, discuss, I guess, the differences in ergonomics overall. Uh, the handle on the Apollo is much less comfortable, in my opinion, than the one on the Helios. It's better contoured. It's actually a little bit larger. They're both very large handles, not designed for children, but the Apollo has an actual contoured stock. It fits nicely into a shoulder. It also has a cheek rest, which is pretty comfortable if you want to fire like this. That's gonna look 
like that. I'm trying to like shoulder it with the GoPro, which is obviously on my forehead. The biggest difference for me though, above all else, is not the safety, it's not the jam door, it's not the optics or anything like that. It's not even the tactical rail or the overall comfort of the blaster. It's how it primes. And that is of course the obvious difference in these two blasters. They're both even XVII 700, even though this came with a 12 rounder. That's kind of funny. Hasbro did not want to change their mold. They actually didn't change the mold at all. It still says 2014 in the plastic. This is the biggest difference. You prime an Apollo and it stays back. You can't do anything with it. In fact, I probably just jammed it pretty bad by firing while it was primed back. Um, so primed back like that. And then this is going to have to go forward. Whereas the Helios, you can prime back and let go. That's a single action, much more comfortable. You can change it to either side, which means that you can actually, from primed, do that and keep going. That's pretty consistent, whereas the Apollo just does not have that option. You have to prime back, come forward, go out, fire, back, forward, fire, back, forward, fire. That is a series of operations that are not ergonomic, not conducive to actual gameplay. Like you would have to take cover, right? So here we are in cover, prime, lean out, fire, come back, prime back, prime forward, lean out. It's just a lot of different operations between readying and actually playing. Now, none of these compare to all of the various semi-auto flavors of flywheel rival blasters, but they tend to get better performance pre-modified and are really, really nice in that you don't have to charge batteries or fool with anything like that. So these are the two options and the only question that you have to weigh, because I hope that I've made a pretty compelling argument for how the Helios is everything that the Apollo should have been. The Apollo is an ergonomic nightmare that is honestly just not conducive to regular play. The Helios is very comfortable, <laughs> much nicer, honestly aesthetically better looking, and uh, you really just can't beat the fact that this auto retracts. Forget that it's ambidextrous, that's really nice. The automatic loading of the blaster that way is just such a great feature. I don't really have a problem with the difference between these two buttons. They're both pretty comfortable to tap with the uh, the meat of your palm down like that. That is not an issue. For me, at least, everybody's hands are gonna be a little bit different, but that's pretty comfortable. Now, what it breaks down to is price. So I went to Target today before making this video, and I will tell you that this uh, is $30 on Amazon. The Phantom Core version of this is also, I think, $30, which is ridiculous. But the uh, regular versions that I found at Target are $17. So you could buy an Apollo in red or blue for $17 at Target. And for, for point of order, let's just say that it's roughly half the price of the Helios. That is a really, really, really nice feature because not everybody has $30 to drop on their Nerf Blaster. If they're coming both with a seven rounder in that case anyway, like you could entry level into Rival with the Apollo for even less than the Phantom Core Chaos, which is going to be selling for 20 United States dollars for a while. GameStop is a super greedy company, so if you want a Deadpool version, it now costs 35 per blaster because they can, because they're GameStop. Uh, but the thing that I really want to talk about is while this is half the price and this is clearly superior, there is an alternative option, which is at Target right now, you can buy a Team Red or Blue Artemis for $36. Now again, Prices are gonna vary by region, but that's $36. That is very little more than this. You have literally triple the capacity in terms of this holds 30 rounds, 33 if you do it right. Uh, and it is just a far superior blaster, not necessarily in terms of its performance because they all perform more or less the same, but in terms of having slam fire being a great feature and just in general being a blaster that has higher capacity, pump action, um, it's just nice. You don't have to fool with magazines. Some people really like the ability to rapidly reload, which is the primary advantage of this platform at this point, but it's so easy to just pull back and top off through here that I almost don't even count that as a detractor. Not carrying magazines onto the battlefield is a pretty nice feature in and of itself, but that is 
is just my take on it. I think that if you're entering into rival Springerness, uh, you shouldn't even consider the Aries. The Aries is an awful blaster for a variety of reasons, but I think that you should strongly consider saving up and just purchasing this. It comes with more ammo, which is actually a big deal given how much rival ammo is worth, roughly a quarter around, and it is a, uh, an ergonomically much nicer blaster to use with an overall higher competitive advantage against both the other Springers by a long shot and against the flywheelers in terms of like the general uh, performance upgrades. So I like the Artemis a lot. It is my personal favorite rival Springer, which is why I went to the trouble of <laughs> putting together these grips and stock attachment points so that it's actually a very versatile blaster. Uh, there's actually a newer version of this that EOC just finished that's even more uh, ergonomic, but even just turning it from a VFG into an AFG is very, very nice. Honestly, I like this blaster way more than either of these two, and I would never choose to use one of these if I had an Artemis nearby. I've played with an Artemis in like Singapore, I've played with it in Hong Kong, I've played with it in the United States and Canada, and the Artemis is just a very consistent rival experience, so to speak, that doesn't really cost that much more than anything and is frankly cheaper than pretty much all of the flywheel options still. So the Springers are definitely the more budgety option, but if you're going for the budget option and you have more than 16 bucks, like I would definitely just pick up an Artemis instead. So I'll put a link to all three of these Springers in the description box below where you could purchase them on Amazon and support the channel. If you're just collecting the Phantom Core line, I totally understand. I am a collector myself, but if you're trying to get into ride battles of any variety or just break into that new ammo type. I think that the Artemis is the cheapest uh, value proposition. You get the most fun for your money out of the Artemis. I recommend this all the time to brand new SENC members who are looking for something that they can play with that doesn't absolutely break the bank. So Artemis reigns supreme, which is a little weird of an answer for like the versus video between the Apollo and the Helios, but that's just my take on it. As always, I would absolutely love to know your opinion in in the comments section below. If you've got all three of these blasters, your opinion is super duper valuable to me. If you want any of these blasters, I still want your opinion. So please leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Springer line and where it sits right now. And if you're going to try and defend the Aries to me, then don't actually leave me a comment. I, I just don't. I don't know how you're that wrong. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I do like doing these versus videos and these long form tar uh, talks sometimes because I know that a lot of people enjoy them. And as always, much love, nerf on, drek out.